Uh, welcome back once again. And we're so glad that you're with us as we carry on digging into the Bible book of Revelation. Uh, we've reached chapter 10. So let me read to you the first four verses from chapter 10. They say this. Then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven. He was robed in a cloud with a rainbow above his head. His face was like the sun and his legs were like fiery pillars. He was holding a little scroll which lay open in his hand. He planted his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land. And he gave a loud shout like the roar of a lion. When he shouted, the voices of seven thunders spoke. And when the seven thunders spoke, I was about to write. But I heard a voice from heaven say, Seal up what the seven thunders have said and do not write it down. Remember that we are in the midst of the seven trumpets. We've already had the, the sixth uh, but instead of going straight to the seventh trumpet, we get this pause in chapters 10 and 11. The seventh trumpet doesn't actually get sounded until uh, chapter 11, verse 15. So we've got a little while to go to get there. We had this pause before. We had it between the sixth and the seventh seals in chapter 7, where we saw that in the midst of the chaos that's happening on the earth, God protects his people, his church. Nothing can take away our place before God's throne because Jesus Christ has died and was raised to life again. Now, as we begin this pause between the sixth and the seventh trumpets, we're going to see that the church, God's people in Christ, are not just protected, but will actually end up being victorious. This seems uh, impossible when we look at history from a purely human perspective. But from the throne room of God, we see things differently. And that's what's beginning in these first four verses. John sees a mighty angel, a representative sent from God, come down from heaven. He's described with wonderful metaphor and allusion to God's presence uh, in the Old Testament. Robed with a cloud is a sign of God's presence uh, in Exodus 19 verse 9. The rainbow above his head calls us back to God's covenant faithfulness, as detailed in Genesis chapter 9, verse 16, that he will never break his promises. The angel's legs are described as fiery pillars, possibly alluding to the, fi uh, the pillar of fire that uh, led God's people when they were in the wilderness in Exodus 13, verses 21 to 22. There's a sense here that even as God's people, the church, go through history that is chaotic and confusing, God walks with them. He is not absent in the midst of uncertainty and confusion and suffering and sorrow. And what a great comfort that is to us. The angel then holds a scroll, which should take us back to chapter 5 of Revelation, when the angel was weeping because no one could be found to open the scroll which contains the purposes of God for the world. Of course, if you remember chapter 5, you'll remember that we discover that Jesus Christ, the Lamb who was slain but is now alive, is worthy to open the scroll and praise and worship erupts in heaven. So we find here that the scroll is open. Uh, we're about to discover more about God, how God's purposes are going to unfold on the earth amidst the chaos and confusion and the violence of rebellion against him, of human sin. But then the angel shouts like a lion and seven thunders speak in, res in response. It looks like we're actually about to enter another series of seven. Remembering that these seven, the seals and the trumpets and now the thunders, are not new things happening and they're not linear in time. They're like different camera angles on the same events in history. And they tell us something slightly new each time, much like different camera angles capture a different view of the scene of a film and tell us something new about what's going on in that scene. But just as we're ready to hear the seven thunders and just as John is ready to write them down, a voice from heaven comes and tells him not to write anything down. This must be the authoritative voice of God speaking. But why are these thunders stopped? Well, it's not exactly clear why, but I think it has something to do with the fact that in our last video, we saw that we, even with the plagues and the other disasters of war and famine and the like, humankind still didn't repent and turn to God. The seven seals affected a quarter of humanity. The seven trumpets affect a third of humanity. And presumably the seven thunders would affect a half. But the escalation of calamities doesn't bring about repentance. Instead, God has another way of working. And we're about to see something, uh, to see the seemingly contradictory way in which God's victory over sin and evil comes about. A victory through suffering. 
for more of that, tune in to our next video.